My name is Amata and in this Red Gaming Tech video I am here with the latest from the tech world from the last 24 or so hours as per usual. So what do I have for you today? Well, we're going to kick things off with some rumours on the iPhone X's successor, a little something from AMD and 7nm, and then we're going to finish up proceedings with two beefy pieces from Intel, the first of which is going to be their fourth quarter and full year 2017 financial results, and finally we're going to be talking about Intel's assurances that they're going to make silicon-based changes for next-gen CPUs that will address Spectre and Meltdown. But as I said, let's kick things off with Apple, shall we? Unsurprisingly, the rumours are flying thick and fast, but again, these are rumours, so do take everything I'm about to say with a pinch of salt. So, Apple is expected to launch OLED successors to both the iPhone 8 and iPhone 8 Plus, which is kind of interesting. And there's also going to be a brand new edition, which is going to be a 6.4 inch LCD. Now we also have some comments from the Taiwanese publication DigiTimes, which is pretty well known for covering what Apple are up to, and they are claiming to have some details on what Apple are planning for 2018. So what do they have to say for themselves? Well, they're basically saying that we're actually looking at four different projects for this year. We've got an LCD device between 5.7 to 5.8 inches, an OLED device between 6.0 to 6.1 inches, another OLED device between 6.4 and 6.5 inches, and finally another LCD device between 6.0 and 6.1 inches. However, there is another analyst which believes that Apple is going to bring us two of the LCD projects and the 6.4 to 6.5 inch OLED iPhone that I just discussed this year. Now, again, according to rumours, and these kind of line up with rumours that we've heard previously regarding Apple, all of these will support wireless charging and 3D sensing. I'm not really surprised to see that continue, that being the wireless charging, because obviously that was a big thing during the iPhone X's reveal, and you know when Apple kind of do something like, say, remove the speaker port, they're probably not going to go back on it anytime soon, because you know they're Apple and they love their sort of, hey, here's this thing that doesn't really help, but it looks cool, and that's what matters, right? Kind of things, but in all seriousness... We also have another rumour which basically says and kind of backs up previous rumours that we're going to be getting a successor to the iPhone SE. Now this is going to have wireless charging but it's not going to have the rather infamous face ID that of course again we saw during the iPhone X reveal. But this isn't really surprising because the original iPhone SE was also lacking in some features that sort of flagship devices had. So again these are all rumours and you know it's going to be a while before we get any like hard evidence or hey, this is the lineup, we don't know the specs yet, or anything like that. So do keep that in mind, but that is what's kicking around regarding Apple and what they're planning for 2018. Next up, as I said, is something to do with 7nm, AMD, and of course, Vega. And this particular piece of news comes to us thanks to Anantech, of course. I will link their article in the description below this video. However, the TLDR is essentially that the AMD CEO, Lisa Su, has confirmed that we're making use of both TSMC and Global Foundries for their next-gen 7nm Vega and, of course, Zen 2 as well. Basically, what they're hoping for with this is that the smaller process node will give them increased silicon density and also help reduce that all-important power consumption. Now, you tech buffs watching this, and I'm sure there's a few of you watching this because, you know, shockingly, this is a tech channel, you will, of course, be raising an eyebrow a little bit as, of course, they have used exclusively Global Foundry's 14nm node for Polaris and Ryzen. Now, the Ryzen 2000 series will be using 12nm. That's also going to be Global Foundry's. So, with Next Gen Vega, we're also going to be seeing a slight move away from that with them making use of some of what TMC have to offer with this 7nm node. And you might go, okay, that's all great. You sure said some words there, but what does that actually mean? Well, I do have a little bit of a statement here from Lisa Sue herself, who said, quote, so in 7NM, we'll use both TMC and Global Foundries. We're working closely with both Foundry partners and we'll have different product lines for each. I am very confident that the process technology will be stable and capable for what we're trying to do. So that kind of shows you what their thinking is. Obviously, they're trying to kind of do a bit of a course correct with Vega with what they're doing in the future with that particular you know graphics card and the graphics series to be more exact trying to get more volume possibly that sort of thing obviously we don't know anything about anything important like say performance difference between the two 
but obviously we're going to be expecting improvement over the current gen products which of course make use of 14 and 16 nm so it seems like we're going to get two different versions of it just from what they've said you know with two different product lines for each so one's going to maybe have just the one and one's going to have both and maybe the one with both will be better but more expensive that sort of thing so we kind of will have something for the higher end and something for the sort of medium end, that sort of thing, and just hopefully get more produced out there because they're going to be working again with TSMC who are just on the up and up lately. So I'm you know, hoping to sort of bring them into the fold maybe, get some of their know-hows or, of course, their tech and see if they can kind of improve things in the graphics department because while Ryzen has been killing it, Vega was a little bit of a disappointment for a lot of people. So... When are we actually going to see all this stuff, you might be asking? Well, the first 7M Vega will actually be the Radeon Instinct family, which is going to be very focused upon AI, and that's going to be set to release later on this year. And the Vega-based desktop parts are unlikely to be seeing the light of day until Q1 2019, sadly. However, the next big thing that's going to be touting 7M is, of course, Navi which if we're sort of following what we know or suspect we know, we're going to be seeing that in the second half of 2019. And of course, we will then see that followed by 7NM Plus, which is scheduled to be hitting customer you know, computers and of course shelves and digital work, uh, digital stores and all that good stuff by the end of 2020. And so I'm going to go, might go, oh, hang on, back up. Earlier you mentioned Zen 2, you kind of neglected that this entire segment, and yeah, I kind of have, because to be honest, there's not really that much to say regarding it. We're going to have 7NM Zen 2 in 2019, we're going to have 7, uh, 7NM Plus, excuse me, Zen 3, which is also going to kind of be sort of perpendicular to the post-Navi GPU. So all of that is, obviously, we, we know that this is confirmed, they're definitely doing this, but a lot of that was kind of speculation as to when this is going to happen, obviously delays do happen, that sort of thing. You can never know with technology if there's a major issue, obviously they need to work on it. They've obviously got, you know, any spectre nonsense to worry about. But, of course, that is kind of getting past the point there. As I said, the full article from Anantech is going to be in the description below this video. I have barely scraped the surface. It is huge. We have a ton of comments from Lisa Sue in this particular interview. Um, so if you want to go check that out, I would recommend you do so. It is definitely worth a read. So, let's move on to our final segments, which are both regarding Intel. So, of course, as I said, I'm going to kick things off with the financials. Again, these are the full year and fourth quarter. And, unsurprisingly, given it's because it's Intel, they have done really, really well. And now, I have a bit of a statement here from the CEO of Intel, who said, quote, 2017 was a record year for Intel with record fourth quarter results, driven by strong growth of our data-centric business, the strategic investments we made in areas like memory, programmable solutions, communications, and autonomous driving are starting to pay off and expand Intel's growth opportunity. In 2018, our highest priorities will be executing to our data-centric strategy and meeting the commitments we make to our shareholders and our customers. And we do see that very much reflected in the actual figures, as in the fourth quarter, Intel did see strong performance from their data-centric businesses, which did account for 47% of their fourth quarter revenue. So that's pretty insane and is actually an all-time high for them. The Data Center Group, Internet of Things Group and Programmable Solutions Group all achieved records in terms of quarterly revenue as well. The Client Computing Group also shipped a record volume of i7 processors and of course we saw the launch of the 8th gen Intel Core processor which makes use of the Radeon RX Vega M series and we also saw some stuff you know with LTEs and that sort of thing and I know you're thinking okay but what what did they actually make and their revenue was 62.8 billion dollars so uh not exactly small change I'm sure you'll agree Oh, and that is full year, by the way. For the Q4 2017 revenue, you're looking at 17.1. Now, obviously, I just spent a minute or two saying how well the data-centric business did for Intel. But you might be going, okay, that's great, but obviously we're primarily PC gamers, or at least interested in PC gaming in some respect, watching this video. And the PC-centric segment in Q4 2017 was $9 billion dollars. Now, what that's an insane amount of money is actually down 2% versus Q4 2016. Now, obviously, 2% isn't 
a lot, but when you're talking billions, it kind of is. So it's not a brilliant downturn, but it's not exactly, oh my God, it's the end of the world, you know, run screaming through the streets because everything we know is coming to an end. But no, it's definitely obviously not performing as well as data. That's obviously why Intel focused so much on that at CES, because, you know, they can see, okay, this is where we're making enough money to fill several Scrooge McDuck sized swimming pools. So, you know, let's crack on with this, basically. Oh, for those of you wondering, this does reflect taxes and all that good stuff, so just keep that in mind. So, let's get to Meltdown Spectre. Now, obviously, we've seen a lot of software updates to try and, you know, minimise the risk and the vulnerability to Meltdown and Spectre, but Intel are also hard at work at hardware level changes to upcoming CPUs, which are going to try to address these security threats. Now, again, these were confirmed by Intel CEO, and they were in the earnings call, but I wanted to get the financials out of the way first. But they are, again, working on hardware level fixes, and the quote I have here, is, quote, security is a top priority for Intel, foundational to our products, and it's critical to the success of our data-centric strategy, blah, 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 blah. Our near-term focus is on delivering high-quality mitigations to protect our customers' infrastructure from these exploits. We're working to incorporate silicon-based changes to future products that will directly address the Spectre and Meltdown threats in hardware, and those products will begin appearing later this year. So, I'm sure most of you probably all of you noticed there, he didn't actually mention any specifics. He didn't say, hey, it's coming to this line, it's coming to that line. He just said, hey, the upcoming CPUs are going to have this. So does that mean all of them? Possibly? I mean, I wouldn't take it to mean exactly that, but it does kind of lean that way, doesn't it? I mean, obviously we'll wait and see what actually happens, but I'm glad that they are taking this extremely seriously. Obviously we've Seeing them try to address this with patches and with mixed results, with, with mixed performance impacts as well. But obviously, while they can't do anything hardware-wise for the CPUs that are already out there in the world, obviously, it's safe to say that most of us are breathing a sigh of relief that they're going, okay, we can't have this happen with Ice Lake and you know whatever lake comes after that and that sort of thing. Now, as Paul points out in his written article that he's actually done over on our website, which of course is redgamingtech.com, and I will include a link to that as well in the description below this video, we can assume for desktop that this will be introduced by the time of Ice Lake, and for ability, it is a possibility we'll see it for Cannon Lake, but again, that is pure speculation on his part, but I would say it's about right, to be honest, given how long Cannon Lake has been delayed, they're probably gonna try to do something but they probably can't make the sort of sweeping changes that they're probably gonna have to make to address this it's probably gonna be software based but again that's pure speculation they haven't said they've just said upcoming processes which could literally mean bloop de bloop and nothing else for all we know so i'm sure what most of you are wondering is you know what's going to happen to coffee lake and the upcoming refresh I would imagine Intel are not exactly, you know, resting on the laurels, cracking open the beers and resting on the sun deck when it comes to that. They're probably trying their hardest to add changes to these chips to avoid another absolute clusterfuck with the PR disaster that, of course, we've had over the last few weeks with Meltdown and Spectre. And obviously this would tempt people that have been absolutely hammered by the performance um, impacts by the patches and Meltdown is back to themselves to upgrade to these refreshes or what have you to basically say, okay, I literally cannot be affected because it's not possible or it's incredibly unlikely on a hardware level. So Intel are probably very aware that they can say, like on the box or whatever, like, hey, this is immune to Meltdown Spectre, that sort of thing, and might, seem, might make these refreshes seem, rather, excuse me, better for those who have been affected. But to be honest, a lot of this is pure speculation. All we can go off is that they are doing silicon based changes for Meltdown and Spectre for upcoming processors. That is literally the only thing we know for certain. So anything upcoming is a bit of a question mark at the moment as to what they're actually doing. But given how badly this has gone for them over the last few weeks, I wouldn't be surprised to see them trying their absolute damnedest to do this for every upcoming CPU, but that may not be possible for various reasons, so we're just going to have to wait and see, unfortunately. Again, do check out Paul's article in the description below. He is on holiday in Norway at the moment, but apparently he can't help himself when it comes to something really juicy. So go give that a read if you're missing his, um, his Fred Ripper and all that, so... Give that a look see again it is in the description below this video but that is me done for this video thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time